we are going back to the genesis of Pokemon and taking a big tour around Kanto with the supposed best of the bunch, according to myself, in a non-elitist kind of way. More subjective kind. It was the year of 1996 and Pokemon was making itself known to the world outside of Japan, with an anime emulating from its success, and it wasn't until after I played the second gen that I finally got a chance to experience where all the fun came from. I would have gotten it sooner, but you can't trust a kid who thinks it's a good idea to throw his sister's Game Boy into the ceiling to see how durable it actually is. So now that I'm a person who looks after his own stuff as well as others properly, it's also safe to take extra care of a well-secured list in order to finally answer the question of what my favourite Pokemon is overall. And as I mentioned in my announcement, each list will contribute to the final compiled list in some nice effects, if we're lucky. This will determine overall what my favourite Pokemon is. <laughs> This list won't count starter Pokemon, Suedo Legendaries, Evolutions, or Legendaries because they have their own lists to make use of. I also take the one per evolution line into consideration for all the lists, so I shall remind you every time a new list is released. Or if you don't want me to annoy you, just pipe down. So I don't think I have anything else to say besides from, let's go on the road to Viridian City. I always wanted to say that. PIMP! At number 5, we have the non-extinct version of Kabutops, Scyther. While I do prefer Sizzle for battling, Scyther's the one I find more aesthetically pleasing. Not to say I'm in love with it romantically or anything. Hello, a candlelit dinner sounds nice. What? I just like how they made a Pokemon version of a praying mantis look so daring and focused, and partially like a dinosaur reptile thing. The only thing letting it down is its typing. However, we can't be perfectionists because we'd all be dickheads. Okay, there should be a more tactful way to put that. We'd all be willy heads. But Scyther is a Pokemon that can exact the way we can admire imperfections. It can fly, but can't fly others to certain locations. There's also the bad typing, the supposed loathing of the color red, according to the anime. Maybe it hates bloodlines, which is why it kicks the leader out if defeated. Scyther is also part of the only evolution line where the base stat total of a Pokemon doesn't increase. So while Scizor is built more towards defense, while Scyther aims more towards speed, and I'm not going to ignore that Scizor has many moves that make up for its lack of speed, such as Pursuit and Bullet Punch, while Technician remains in effect to give it even more power, you can make Scyther useful with the same ability with a similar kind of moveset to still make it effective. And it can make better use of U-Turn. And I think a Pokemon who can just hit you and run away is pretty funny. So for a few facts to point out, Scyther's prototype name was Strike, X-Men eat your heart out, and is often seen as the counterpart to Pinsir until Heracross had to mess everything up. And even though it has a very simple name, it's not the facepalm kind of simple that you see in Pokemon like Krabby. And most of the Pokedex entries just describe how sharp and sturdy its claws are, saying it moves like a ninja, even creating a double team-like effect. I rest my case. Petwar! It's the Nine Tails! Oh, you got big. Why'd you touch me? <laughs> this is what happens if anyone grabs Nine Tails. Tail. A thousand year curse. Sure, I didn't yank it, but I need to make a jokey sketch, so please forgive me. It's definitely one of the more mysterious Pokemon out there. Being smart, mystical, and staying alive for a thousand years. Much like how Arcanine's name describes itself. But while I do love Arcanine very much, I just love the origin and design of Ninetales even more. And shiny Ninetales look like it became a Pokemon Fox version of Dry Bones. I can say that the Pokedex maybe over glorifies Arcanine, but then I'd be a bit biased in saying that. But it is based on the Japanese Kitsune, which is a fox that can take on a spirit form, hence why it can learn ghost type moves. And more specifically, the Kyubi no Kitsune, which is a fox that has silvery gold fur and gains deity like powers upon gaining its ninth tail. Ninetales is very good when it comes to leftovers, will o wisp, and spamming the hell out of Carmine, while Drought soaks up the water and strengthens Flamethrower. So you can tell why I like it so much. All that folklore and a strategy that is meant to annoy you, with stats that cater more towards special attack and speed. Three. We're going into the more mystical folklore now with the most hated Pokemon that Lorelei has to offer, Lapras. It's certainly one of the most unique Pokemon Game Freak have ever made, and sadly, hunters have made it almost extinct with their barbaric actions, which is why we need to save a Lapras today. With your support, you can make this world a better place. Just call 0800 Money Helps Us to adopt a Lapras today. Teach it Psychic or Thunderbolt to be more adventurous than Ice Beam or Surf. Help today. Win a free pen. If knowing this already makes you special, mysticism is something I quite like, and Lapras is a dominant fighter because, well, they rarely fight. Irony right there. 
Okay, they are good lovers in a friendly way. But with their durability, they can withstand plenty of hits from whomever provokes them. And as long as this one gargantuan versus another in a final rival battle, we should have a grand spectacle on our hands. And we can sail across the ocean together and battle while Pokemon being on water actually makes sense. DIE! The master of sinister ranking, Gengar, who I hope we don't see pranking people in the hood. Through the evolutions, we get Lickers, to hauntings of the night, if that didn't sound cliche enough, to a supposed doppelganger of your shadows. If there's anything to notice about Gengar, it's the simple purple design with a Cheshire Cat influence, with plenty of firepower to back it up. It was always the Pokemon I saw as not being easy to get because I hardly had the opportunity to trade one. No thanks to that dick trading a Haunter holding an Everstone in Gen 4, but thus it all made me want it more. That and the duel against giant Alakazam made it feel like I wanted to reenact it in the games with my Gengar going up against my tool. I feel like Gengar would be my true friend, laughing at the grievances of others on Call of Duty and pulling the seat away from that kid in class. Actually, don't do that. They'll break their ass. There's a few strategies you can apply to it as well. How about that substitute and disable combo? Or the wide lens hypnosis one? <laughs> Makes me pee a little just thinking about it. Dude, I think you might be a sadist. <laughs> And to announce the winner of today's competition, it's the ultimate weapon-wielding Avenger of Drybone Valley, the almighty Marowak that isn't a Kangaskhan. Marowak may not be the strongest Pokemon, it may not be the fastest, but its overall concept is what draws me into it. The overcoming of grief from his departed mother and living a life of luxury, manhandling boulders and acting like a tough guy. And if you let it hold a thick club, it becomes even more ferocious with doubled attack that reaches to 160, and Rockhead to show that its body remains unscathed after a double edge. And while my old, old evolution of Pokemon series is forever lost because I deleted most of my pre-2011 videos, I did give a lot of hints and even said up front that Marowak was among one of my favorite Pokemon. And weirdly enough, random fact, its beta name was Guardia, Spanish for Guardian. And the Marowak graveyards that exists in the game, I think, according to Wiki, is a reference to the elephant's graveyard of modern myth. It truly exists as an underdog within the Pokemon universe, despite being based on a reptilian sort of thing, based on the shape of its head, like a midget Charizard. So I hope you enjoyed that, plenty more lists to go from here. Follow the links in the description for any social networking links, and until next time, thank you, and lights out.